Our scripture this morning comes to us from the 8th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Amen. Verse 4 through 18, we'll consider for your hearing today. Wonderful passage of scripture. A sower who sows. Amen. The word is being sown every Sunday. But how do we receive the word is what's important. Verse 4 says, And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell among a rock, and as soon as it was sprang up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundred fold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him saying, what might this parable be? And he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, and then cometh the devil, and taketh the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they are heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this world and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he has lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or put it under a bed, but set it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed how ye hear, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seeming to have. Amen? Amen. Take your neighbor by the hand and look your neighbor in the ear. Look your neighbor in the eye. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all need to hear the word. Because if you don't hear the word, you will use it or you will lose it. Amen. Take your neighbor by the hand, look him in the eye and say, hear the word. Use it or lose it. Amen. That's what I'm going to talk to you about just briefly for a moment. Hear the word. Use it. Or lose it. Amen. When I was a boy about 14 
are 15 years old. There was a good friend of mine, the Reverend Marcellus Wade, who was like a big brother to me. As a matter of fact, as a boy growing up, he would lift weights in the backyard. And he was so strong and robust that many times he didn't have enough weights on his dumbbell or barbell. And he would call me over and he'd say, T, get on the dumbbell, get on the barbell. And he would start lifting the weights with me on top of them. And I remember that so vividly because that was about relationship. And I remember as I grew up being the lookout man for him whenever he was doing things that was not right. He'd say, look out, T. Make sure if anybody come, you come running and let me know so I'll have time to get out of this mess. Amen. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about here. But I remember the day that God called him to preach. And I can remember him coming home from school. And he was in the yard across the street. And that was my hero. That was my mentor. That was my good friend. And I went running over to him. And as I ran over to him, he was quoting the word of God. He was quoting the scripture of the sower. He said, the sower went out to sow his seed. And some fell among, amen, good grounds. And it brought forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And as he quoted that scripture, I didn't know what it meant. And I began to ask him, what does this scripture mean? And he took time and he explained it to me. And I can remember that was the first time in my life that the light really came on about what God can do in the midst of our lives if we are Christians. Because I'd seen God change his life. I'd seen God work on him and make him into an individual that now loved the word of God. And not only did he love the word of God, but he lived by the word of God. And I'm, a, I'm amazing, it's amazing how when we learn to use God's word, how God's word can make us in the midst of our lives. You see, in this text, it talks about the quality of the hearer's hearts. It talks about the power of the word. And it talks about how the word can be either effective in our lives or ineffective in our lives. And it always amazes me that how when we come to church Sunday after Sunday and I preach to you from the word of God that there are some of you who receive the word Amen. All of you hear the word, but not all of you really receive the word. And I've come to understand that God has devised it so that in hearing the word, it represents how the kingdom grows and how we come to know Jesus in the parting of our sins. And so Jesus uses this parable, a parable uh, yes, it's God's teaching method for how he would share with them what he would have them to know. Parables were used so that they would not immediately understand, but that they would have to work to get the meaning of what was said. And you know how it is. It seems like it would have just been easy for Jesus to have just come right out and told them exactly what he wanted to say. But yet he uses this parable because he wanted them to think about it. He wanted them to explore. He wanted them to dig into the words that were saying and come up with the right meaning. 
And yet at the same time, the text makes it plain that there are some who were here and not understand. There were, there were some that were see and not really see. And yet God would have us to hear the word. And when we hear the word, the word ought to take effect in the midst of our lives. Somebody here ought to say amen today. Anybody here ever heard the word and the word made a difference for you? Anybody in here today ever dealt with a situation in the midst of your life and the word came to you and you were able to go a little further? You may have been downtrodden. You may have been out in your life. You may have been going through the pains and the difficulties. But when you heard the word, the word made a difference. But you know why it made a difference? It really was just not the hearing of the word, but it was how you used the word. Because you can hear the word, and if you don't use the word, you will lose the word. Look at somebody and say, you can hear the word, but if you don't use the word, you will lose the word. Yeah, I'm thankful to God that that day that I heard the Reverend Marcellus Wade using the word, amen, and the word was not lost because as he used the word, the word settled in my heart and I came to realize that if God could change a man like this with his word, it must be something real about the word of God. Yeah, God is able to use the word to make a difference in all of our lives. You see, as a Christian, yeah, I have observed throughout my Christian life how the word caused me to grow. Anybody in here who the word, as you look back over your life, caused you to grow, to become stronger in the Lord, to know the Lord a little better, to love the Lord, to want to serve the Lord, simply because you were growing, amen, in knowledge and in faith. That's what the word does. It allows you to grow in knowledge and in faith. Jesus explains to the hearers here how important it is for us to hear the word with a right heart. Amen. If you really want to be affected by the word of God, you've got to hear it with the right heart. When you look at how he explains that, let's go to the text. Beginning in verse 10, he says, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. He said, look, everybody is not intended to understand what this kingdom is all about. But he says to my disciples, the ones who are willing to get closer to me. You see, I've come to understand that the closer you get to Christ, the better you will understand the word. Some folk will never understand fully what the word is really saying to us in our lives because they don't take time to get close to God. You got to get close to Jesus. As a matter of fact, the disciples asked him the question. In verse 9, disciples asked him saying, what might this parable be? After he's already explained the parable to the crowd that was all around. And the crowd was baffled by it. Nobody could really get the meaning of this parable. It, it went straight over their heads. And then as he began to explain it to him, he said, look, it wasn't meant for everybody. I said it to everybody, but it's only meant for those who would understand and know 
the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And it's good to be able to be in the mix, isn't it? It's good to be able to know that because of relationship with the Lord, he'll show you how to handle this thing. He'll show you how to live the right way. He'll show you how to be blessed in the midst of your life. He'll show you how to be fruitful in the midst of your life. And he says, look, seeing the light of clause of verse 10, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. You ever seen something that you thought you saw and you really didn't see it? And then somebody else come along and say, you didn't really see that. And you'll say, I saw it with my eyes. And they'll say, no, you didn't see it. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But there are times in life that things that appear to be one thing are really not that way. And then he says, hearing, they might not hear. Now, now y'all good at that. Amen. Whole lot of times you think you heard something. Your ears deceived you. And you really did not hear it. Amen. As a matter of fact, all the time, I think folks said something that they really didn't say. Amen. Me and Sister Turner went through that just this morning. I thought she said one thing. Amen. And she really said another. Y'all ought to hear what I'm saying. You know what her response was, you wasn't listening, were you? <laughs> but hearing, they might not understand. And you know how that is, when you really don't have a knowledge of what's being said, a whole lot of times you can hear things and may not understand. Have any of you ever been in a, a setting where you are being taught and you didn't know the basis? You missed the basis? And after you missed the basis, amen, everything else just went right over your head. And you were sitting in there trying to figure out, trying to get some understanding of what was really being said. Jesus says that, but he says it based upon Isaiah 6 and 8. Turn with me quickly to Isaiah 6 and 8. Isaiah says that God intends for the kingdom to be this way that you may see and not really see. You may hear and not really hear, but it's based upon the people's hearts not being right. In Isaiah 6 and 8, it says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, un, saying Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes least they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. God is talking about us people who is far from him, who won't understand him, who won't get close to him, who won't live for him, who won't be what he would have them to be. And he says that in that situation, that the words of God will make their hearts fat where they won't really get a grasp of what's being said. Somebody in here interested this morning? And so Jesus simply quotes what Isaiah has already said. And so in verse 11, he says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, he says, the seed that the sower plants. And every Sunday, I come to this church as the sower, the word of God. 
with the seed, the word of God. And I plant it. I throw it out to you. And I hope that in my throwing it out to you, you will get the word of God. And not only will you get it, but that it will come to the hearts that are ready and ripe for it. As a matter of fact, he explains a few kinds of hearts here. He says in verse 12, as he explains verse, verses 5 through 8, in verse 12, he begins to explain verses 5 through 8. When he says, those by the wayside are they that hear. And then cometh the devil and taketh the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. He said, the first word I throw out, I throw it by the wayside. I throw the seed out and the devil come and takes it right out of their hearts. Amen. Did y'all get that? The devil comes immediately and takes it away. He says the second word I throw on the rocks and they get happy because they receive the word. They say, I got the word. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. But because they don't have any root, they just lay there unattended, no moisture, no real soil to help them to be able to grow. And so they just lay on the rock and it doesn't make a difference that they heard the word because they didn't have any root in their lives, no soil, no moisture. They, they don't nourish it. There's nothing to really help it to grow. And so it just stayed there. And every Sunday, I, I throw the word out. And the devil come take it out of a whole lot of your hearts. Others, I throw the word out to. And it just lays right there. You don't do anything with it. You, you just hear the word and, and you receive it. But yet, you don't do anything. You happy about it. You run out of here and say, oh, Reverend Priest today. That, that was a great sermon. But it doesn't make a difference in your life. It took up no root for you to be able to live by it. Some says in verse 13, and they on the rock are they which hear and receive the word with joy, and they have no root, which for a while and in time of temptation they fall away. And then there are those in verse 14 that fell among thorns, which when they are heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and bring forth no fruit. Some fall among the thorns. The word falls down in difficult situations of life. When they heard the word, they were glad to get it. But then they start having some money problems. Their children started acting up. Their house got foreclosed on. Health became bad. And all of a sudden, because of the cares of the world, they lost their relationship with the Lord. How many of us on Sundays get the word? Hear the word. And then you go back into the world. And that old crazy boss you got. Start giving you problems. You get out of church and you've heard the word and you're happy and you go home. And, and that husband or that wife who didn't even come to church today is waiting on you and they mad. And all of a sudden now you caught up with the cares of the world. How many of you, some, sometimes the devil get on you even before you leave the church house. 
Some of y'all will go out and you left your lights on this morning and all of a sudden the parking lot's empty and nobody to give you a boost. Your battery has run down. And so you got to remember that when the word is sown, it all depends on your heart as to how you receive the word. But the good thing about it is, is that the word sometimes falls on good soil. Oh yeah, any good soil in the house, any, any hearts that are right with the Lord in the house, that, don't fool me now, any hearts that really love Jesus, any hearts that really want to be close to the Lord, any hearts that really want to walk with the Lord, any hearts that really want the word to make a difference in their life, any hearts in here today that want the word to change their lives, to order their steps. Oh, yeah, look at somebody and say, I want the word to make a difference in my life. Oh, look the other way and say, hear the word. Use it or lose it. And sometimes the word falls on good soil. Yeah, it falls on some good soil. Amen. Let me get it in that good soil. Sometimes it gets in and it grows. Sometimes it grows to this height. Yeah. Sometimes it starts off small and it grows. Yeah, then it grows sometimes to 60 fold. And then sometimes it grows to be huge to a hundred fold. But the word of God is intended when our hearts are right to cause us to grow in the midst of our lives. And that's what the word says, that, that, that when it falls on good ground, that it'll grow. And then in verses 16, Jesus begins to use an illustration of how when we use the word, how when we hear the word, it will either grow or we'll put it out. He says in verse 16, but no man, when he had lighted a candle, covered it with a vessel, or put it under a bed, but sit it on a candlestick, that they which in the end may see the light. He said, look, the word ought to make a difference in your life. That, that when you got the word, you can't hide it. Because I'm going to tell you, if you cut all the lights off in the house, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Just cut one light on, Steve. <laughs> Amen. One little light makes a difference. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, and when you cut all the light on, yeah, cut the lights back on, Steve. <laughs> and when you cut all the lights on, amen, you're able to see. That's the way the word of God ought to be in your life. You once were in darkness in the midst of your life. But when the word of God comes into your life, you don't want to hide it. Matter of fact, you can't hide it because it's like a light. It will light up your life and it will make a difference in the midst of your life. And not only will it make a difference in the midst of your life, but it ought to make a difference in the lives of those that you come in contact with because you've got the word of God down in the midst of your life and guess what? A light ought to be able to shine on others and they ought to be able to see because you letting your little light shine. Look at somebody say this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yes, I'm going to hide it under a bushel? No, no, no. Will I put it under a bed? No, no, no. I'm going to let my little light shine. That means I'm going to use my light, which is the word of God to make a difference in the lives of everybody I come in contact with. It ought to make a difference in the lives of every individual that you touch because you've got the word of God in the midst of your life. Hallelujah. Yeah. The hearer receives God's light and knowledge and must retain it or you lose it. You see, 
When you lose your light, you can't be what God would have you to be. But in every instance of life, we can either use it or lose it. You see, to use it or to lose it is a reality in life. I was talking to one of our preachers the other day and he retired and he talked about having sick leave on his job. And he said, Pastor, I got three years worth of sick leave and I can't even use it. So I'm going to lose it. But I want you to know on our jobs we have vacation time and we have different kinds of times on our jobs that if we don't use them, we'll lose them. You see, you better learn to use your time right or you'll lose your time. As a young man, I was a runner. And see, I could run all over my hometown. As a matter of fact, I, I thought I was rocky sometimes. I would run the railroad tracks. Yeah, and I could run four and five miles at a time. But you know, I quit running one day. And because I quit running, guess what? I lost it. I didn't use it, so I lost it. Yeah, and there are people right here in this church who have gifts that God has given to them. Some of y'all can sing. Some of you can usher. Some of you can work with the children. Some of you have the gifts of working with the sisterhood and the brotherhood. Some of you have many different gifts, but I want you to know that if you don't use your gift, you will lose your gift. As a matter of fact, if you use your gift, God will mature your gift. It ain't just about using it or losing it, but when you use it, it only gets better and better. Hallelujah. Some of y'all can sing a little bit, but if you start singing, you'll be able to sing a whole lot. Amen. Yes, some of, some of y'all know the word just a little bit, but when you get in Bible study, you'll learn the word, know the word better and better. Let me tell you something. If you don't use it, you will lose it, but if you use it, amen, you'll just get better. And see, the word of God will do a work in your life if you use it. If you use the word, you'll come to love your enemies. If you use the word, then you'll be able to raise your children in the love of God. Oh yeah, if you use the word, you can love that spouse that's always acting up. If you use the word, amen, the word will make a difference in the midst of your life. And so the text here has explained to us the importance of using the word of God to make a difference in the midst of our lives. And so will you use the word today? You've heard the word. Will you use the word? Is there anybody in here today who know you can be better in the Lord if you just let the word take residence in the midst of your life? What you can do for Christ and what it will do for you and what it will do for others if you just use the word the way God would have you to use the word. I'm finished. Give the Lord a round of applause today. You ought to hear the word. And you can use it or you will